We're speaking this morning with Chong Wai Ling from Learning Beyond Schooling. This is for growing pains, of course, um, for all of us to learn how to become better parents. And with this COVID-19 and CMCO and everyone's learning from home, if you've ever thought of homeschooling your children, I guess Wai Ling is the best person to ask whether or not what are some of the pros and cons of homeschooling. Thank you so much, Wai Ling, for speaking to us on The Light Breakfast. Thank you for having me. Now, um, this is very interesting because you and your husband describe your approach as unschooling. How would you dis- define unschooling? Is it the same as homeschooling? Well, it's um, it's a similar in 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 concept. Like um, you, you are teaching your your children at home, and it's a uh, it's a uh, free. Uh, more free uh, approach in a sense that we are not so uh, structured and we go according to the child's interest. So you see, usually uh, homeschooling is, uh, is, it talks about uh, having a curriculum and then the parents will, you know, look for one, uh, purchase an expensive one and then just follow that. Or the syllabus, follow, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Syllabus. Yeah. Syllabus. Yeah. Or uh, you know any schools, American or Australian or whatever international. Mm. So um, the unschooling is um, talking about uh, following the child's interests, and so you really want to explore. You really spend time and energy and just explore as deep as you want, as far as you want. So you can imagine the the kind of freedom that you have, you know. So it's not okay. bogged down by not bogged down by uh, homework, tuition, and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what I understand now is unschooling. It's not based on syllabus, but based on the child's passions. Yes. And yes, um, exactly. in when you say homeschooling in the more conventional sense, most of the time they go by a, a syllabus. Yes, that's right. Okay. So, but, but I guess first question I want to ask, is it legal to homeschool here in Malaysia or to unschool here in Malaysia? Uh, because we've done it uh, since uh, about 20 years ago. Oh. When it, um, the, the, the education minister then, we visited him and uh, he was surprised. He knew of homeschooling, but he didn't know that, oh, Malaysia also has homeschoolers, you know? And at uh, that time, uh, nothing was firm because uh, they didn't know the existence. Yeah. So after our visit, then they, they got to know and understand a little bit more. And uh, they were very supportive. He was very supportive. And uh, since then, uh, then um, shortly after that, there was uh, you know the compulsory schooling act. Yeah. For primary um, schools, right? You yes, have yes. to register your child in a primary school. Right. And uh, there had been a lot of questions to the ministry and the ministry has always taken the stand that homeschooling is not illegal and parents can homeschool. So we take that as, you know, the answer. And there's always been uh, this stance, it's not illegal in Malaysia. But that's homeschooling though, right? So yours doesn't follow a syllabus. So it's, then- it's, the, it's similar, you cannot, uh, you know, they don't go down to the mm. details. Right. I see. So okay. uh, parents can can uh, do it. Of course, um, uh, it's a big responsibility. But I think what we should be talking about is not whether you want to homeschool or unschool. We should t- be talking about learning, because mm. that is the key issue. It doesn't matter how you do it, but we have to go into the area of how children learn. And that was the the key thing that uh, drove us because there has been a lot of new uh, evidence. And this, you know, the past 50 years, researchers and the scientists and educationists, they know, they've been talking about how children learn and, and what are some of it is they should, especially young children, you know, should have a lot of freedom, a lot of space to move and explore and use their whole body, not just sitting down and getting the facts in. That is, um, you know, way past how uh, the world has changed. The world in, um, in new technologies and developments have changed. We have to go according to it. 
Yeah. You know? So you can notice that, especially young children today, you know, it's so difficult to pin them down and then, you know, say, come do your homework and that kind of thing. It just shows that it is no longer working. It hasn't been working, actually. It hasn't been working because uh, the industry, the whole economy has changed and that uh, has also changed the brain functions, you know, the development of the brain. And you can notice the difference between the children today and the children long ago, <laughs> our time. Our time, <laughs> we were, you know, more docile, you know. Yeah. Is that why you chose to unschool all three of your children, uh, Wai Ling? Uh, absolutely. I wish I would be, uh, I myself would be unschooled, you know, because um, uh, even when I was a student in school, uh, I was questioning it. You know, I said, why do we have to learn so many subjects? My interest is, you know, just a handful. Uh, I don't need to know add math or physics or whatever. I mean, generally, of course, we know we want to know the general knowledge, but you know, I wouldn't want to go into the details because I'm not going to be a rocket scientist or whatever. You know, so I already knew what I want to do, and that was the music. I want to do music, <laughs> so I was like counting every day, counting the days. When am I going to, you know, be released from this? But I'm not saying that. Um, I, I I'm not saying that schools are bad or anything. No, I'm saying that. Uh, we have to think um, forward, think forward and think about l how children learn and how we can support that learning to the max. Mm. And, and so that they uh, grow up as functional thinking people with a heart, uh, you know, for others and for the environment, not just, you know, you want to make the money and you know, have a good job and that mm. kind of thing. We really know, we can see for our eyes that this has been a failure, you know, this way of thinking. Mm. You so know? basically you're saying yeah. that what's the point of completing a syllabus, completing the curriculum, getting all the certificates, but you didn't really learn anything, is it? Yeah, I mean, um, it, it's proven that, uh, you know, with your own eyes, I'm sure you have met a lot of people who have come into this uh, crossroads. And recently I saw a video of a very popular uh, YouTuber called uh, Jen, isn't it? Hey, I'm Jen. Or so I'm Jen. So I'm, yes, Jen. So I'm Jen. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, she shared that, you know, uh, she was in a Chinese primary school um, and then there was so much homework, uh, so much studying uh, from school and at home and, and she was rebelling, you know. So she's thinking of all the creative ways to get away from being uh, caught or not doing a homework and, and then she questioned it as an adult today you know what impact has it got on herself you know uh, and how she sees the world today and her uh, about her relationship with other people so mm. these are the questions you, you there are questions that but then a lot of uh young children they're not uh encouraged to ask questions you know and then some are really you know punish for asking too many questions. So that is not the way. It's just suppressing it. And then you just come out as an adult. And all the all these uh, you know energies and pent up things is they, they're just trying to bury it, but then it just comes out. You know? Okay. In different ways. So but, I'm saying that Yeah. Yeah, I'm saying I'm, that um um give think about uh the whole education. It's not just academics. You know, academy is just one part of it, maybe a small part of it, in my opinion. Mm. Yeah. Okay. But how would you track the progress of your child who is homeschooled? There are no exams. Uh, uh, like, how would you track the progress? Then? Yeah, that's the prob another we problem. Whether or, not, uh, whether or not they are learning yeah, well enough. As I'm, I'm saying, there's another problem of schooling is um, tracking, you know? We are not guinea pigs. We are not rats to you know to to track everything. So how does one know that you are learning? It's very simple. You talk to the person by by talking and asking questions and see what you have learned. And children who you know children are just like sponges to absorb everything when they are motivated. But if you just put them in the grinding machine. So they're not going to use their brains and then they, you know, then slowly, slowly, their interest goes down and then the motivation is not that. Then you have to force them, mm. you know? So, and uh, now the 
they are questioning actually a lot of countries are questioning the effectiveness of uh, this testing you know what does it really do you know what does it show about your student so uh, there are already changes going on and even the employers are looking beyond their papers so they want to know whether you know, you can think you can solve problems creatively you know this kind of thing and then you are good with people skills these are the things that everyone needs and you're not learning it from from the academics right mm -hmm. speaking of people skill though Wai Ling, i mean were you concerned that your kids uh, who are all homeschooled miss out on this um, socializing with the peers and extracurricular activities as well that the school provide like how did you provide these experiences for them yeah to answer the question i was in the school you you went to school if the school has 1600 students are we friends with 1600 students we only have friends for about a handful right mm. and who are the people we relate to more is uh, people with the same interests you know people uh with similar personality type or maybe even opposite personality types on the opposite uh, tracks but whatever you know actually it's just a handful and it's mm. also usually is due to the extracurricular activities that you're involved in yeah so we are, when we are doing it uh, on our own it doesn't mean that we're isolating ourselves from outside the world on the contrary uh, we are involving very much in different types of activities, interest space, whether it's nature, studies, um, you know, or ballet, or the arts, whatever. There, there will be interactions, there will be uh, opportunities for connections and friendships. So, it is, we need to open up our minds and think differently. We cannot, like, uh, just uh, get into that, that track and think like that it's not the world isn't like that you know like the covid thing it just comes to us in a blast and then we don't know how to cope deal with it right we have to learn it step by step and what uh it really helpful is the science-based um uh, information that that comes out and for now today we have the internet of course then we have to learn how to uh you know uh, take in all these facts, whether this is fake news or not, you know, which one is the true news. Yeah. So you need that kind of discerning, you know, this discernment. And um, when you, from young, you are taught to uh, seek information, to uh, digest them, to analyze them, to synthesize them, then you are in a better position, you know, to deal with unexpected things such as the pandemic yeah so are you saying that your kids made friends outside of school as well like when you send them for all these extracurricular activities the same naturally naturally of course mm -hmm. and um also um being being parents we have to uh, be ro good role models you know we cannot just like have no interest at home and then sit at home and do nothing right but that is not the case we all have our own interests and passions and that we transfer that passion like mine is in music and i would take them to concerts uh, you know music festivals and it does uh, uh, have a, a big impact on them mm. in, in the sense that all three of them are into music <laughs> you know so whereas uh, my husband is uh, he's into it but uh, he spends uh, a lot of time at work mm. so then the influence is uh, Less. You know, of course, lesser. <laughs> and also, then you say you can't blame me for influencing them with music, right? <laughs> so, uh, are you a say, teacher by Are you a teacher by profession, Wailing? I'm a music teacher. You're a music teacher. Yes, yes. But I mean, I'm just thinking, um, as a homeschooling parent, you have to take on the responsibility of both parent mm -hmm. and teacher. So, how or where do you draw that line between the two roles, or do you draw that line? Um, well, it's something that um, every parent has to go through and find if there's a line or not, right? Uh, of course, in the initial stages, um, I tried out being the teacher role, you know? And then, well, my uh, older daughter liked that, 
but my younger daughter hated it, you know. <laughs> so then you had to find a middle way, the middle way. So each family will be different. Okay. Yeah. But the thing to bear in mind is it's not about whether you can, you are a certified teacher or you have any um, experience in teaching. It's about understanding your child. And you use the time to understand how, what makes them tick, what, you know, uh, what their interests are, what they, what motivates them. And then um, you, you, you grow together, you go accordingly. It's not all smooth sailing, of course, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's not easy. But then if you see the big picture and that is where you want to go, you know, we want uh, to nurture uh, children who, who can think for themselves um, and then who cares about things and people. So uh, that's the big picture. And we want the family closeness, you know, so the, you know, you'll spend more time and uh, uh, connection with each other. So this is the big picture. And then yeah. to go down, you, uh, basically is giving a lot of uh, autonomy, autonomy to the learner mm -hmm. and, and uh, if there's anything all you have to do is just ask questions and listen listen to what they have to say and they have a lot of things to say mm -hmm. and you don't just say oh no no that should not be the way no that's not and in all relationships with your husband your spouse or whatever it's you just need to learn to sit down and just listen to each other and understand why they do certain things yeah so did you have a did you have a set schedule for your kids i mean i'm sure all three kids they are different age group right and they have different interests so did you sit them down at a certain time of a day and they say okay now we're gonna learn this now we're gonna learn that or was it like there's no well, schedule well as i said when when i first started out you know i was pretty um green about it so our first thing is to try to uh, put schooling into the the home yeah and, and that is what most parents would do you know or try to do school at home and then you yes. you really uh, uh you know with this pandemic some some parents are like pulling their hair out <laughs> yeah it's true it's true yes yes and yeah. uh, it, it's not gonna work it's not gonna work because the whole intention is not to uh, put them in the, that system, mm. the system of thinking and the system of learning. So you have to generate that uh, more natural way where they have their own um, motivation, right? So of course it's not easy because different kids have different personalities. So it's really up to the parents' wisdom, yeah, just trial and error. You know, and then the thing is always have the feedback from your child. You know, do you like this way of learning? You know, what would you like? Would you like more freedom? So um, I wish I had that <laughs> when I started. But then uh, up to a point, my younger daughter says, Mom, just let me be. I will learn. I okay. assure you. <laughs> so I just let her be. <laughs> yeah, so. So this so tell us about how how you dealt with it like what's your schedule with the kids like at home you just let them be oh uh, it's not as simple as that yeah right if you um for for me because i have very my gap between my two girls and my younger son is quite uh wide gap about seven or eight years so the most of the work or the mistakes i made was with my girls <laughs> Right, being too rigid, you know, getting mm. the schooling system in and doing the workbooks. Um, yeah, but then uh, after some time, you realize that uh, it's not necessary and they're not really learning anything from that. And then you you adjust accordingly. Yeah. Okay. So as I said, you, you can't really follow anybody's way. You just you have to uh, cultivate your family's way. You know, and don't be afraid. Don't I'm just, be afraid. <laughs> I'm just thinking right now. If I let my nine-year-old girl have her own way every day, just she'd be on the computer playing games from morning <laughs> until night. So I really don't know what kind of learning she'll get in if I just give in to whatever she wants to do. Yeah, that's the thing. We have to deal with our fear. Say, so, oh my gosh, so many hours at. The computer what are you learning you see yeah. it's our fear but 
have you asked your child what you are learning from there you know so um there's two ways one is uh regulation you know you can only do this 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 but i feel that it really doesn't work <laughs> The other way is let them do until until they are so sick of it that they say, "Oh, I've had enough of it. I'm not going to touch it anymore." But the, the important thing is, use whatever way you're using. There's still constant uh, dialogues about it, conversations about it, and then you can talk about your concerns and then talk about it to your child, and the child will, you know, understand your concerns. And then this is how uh, it goes. With any relationships, yeah. So um, conversations, I feel, it's the only way. I mean, you can force it through or whatever. It's just a limited thing, mm -hmm. you know. Without the understanding or the acceptance of the each party, it's not going to work. It's just got a lot of. It's going to create a lot of stress. Okay. Uh, now my my other worry is, if the child is homeschooled. Um, will they get accepted into tertiary educations without the certification, the proper and, certification? And I'm glad you asked that question because <laughs> that is another uh, thing yeah. that we could to we could think about. Is it so? Must it be the only path? Right? Are there other ways? Mm. Is your child even interested in going that way? Because for me. Uh, I early on, as I told you, when I was in school, I already made up my mind what I wanted to do, and uh, that path wasn't my uh, what a choice that I would take. So I just say to my parents, I'm not going to go that path. I just go in the music path, and the music path, um, it, you, there is alternative. There are options. There are options that you can take. So in anything, so the thing is, you have to find out what they really want to do. So if they have been given the freedom. To explore in the early years, they're quite, you know, by the time they're in the teens, they're quite certain what they want to do. And I can tell you that all three of my children, and plus, you know, the other communities who have done this, mm -hmm. by their their teenagers, some even early teens, they know what they want to do, and they tell me, and they tell the parents, and that's where you will help them go in that direction. For example, my Older daughter at 13 years old, she showed us her her first song that she wrote in her room. She spent a lot of time in her room with a guitar, and then she's oh, that's a nice song. Um, uh, what song is that? Oh, this uh, I something that I wrote. And so oh wow, that's nice. You know, so initially we thought it was just a hobby. You know, so we just like went along with it. And then she said, "Oh, um, Ma, I want to go to Nashville." I said, "Where, where the hell is that? In Tennessee, <laughs> Tennessee, USA." I said, "Why? Because <laughs> it's the it's the place where songwriters, all good songwriters, come from. And I want to learn from them." I said, "Wow. Okay. So because she was so young as teenager, so we, you know, we had to accompany her there. And then from there, we it opened our eyes. We said, "Oh my gosh, uh, it's a whole different world that we've never thought of." You know, and then um, this is here is our little girl who wants to be a songwriter, and so yeah, then it's like it really throws you off, and and then you see the whole different world, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's that's uh that's what I'm talking about, you know. What what tertiary, is so tertiary education is not always compulsory, depending on what I'm your child's saying, interest think, is. Think think wider, mm. you know. Um, I'm not saying that it's not good. I'm just saying that explore your options and go according to what they want to do. You know, because most of the time, the children just say, "Oh, my mom wants me to do this. They want me to go to this this route." You know, I'm just doing it. I don't know what I want to do. You talk to the college students; they're gonna say the same thing. But what if your child <laughs> has gone done the homeschooling thing? Had did not follow the syllabus, and then midway through, when they're in their later teens, they say, "I want to be a rocket scientist." Let's just say they say that, and then they want to get into a college or a university. What then? As uh, yeah, they could. Like uh, my second daughter, uh, she did uh, violin for a while, and then she, you know it didn't go very far. Then at uh, as an adult, she suddenly said, "I want to continue with my violin." So 
then you you see what you want want to do from there yeah so um it's that's why i say that life is not clear cut it's not like from point a to point b and then it's just you know the formula everything you just follow it's not because we're dealing with humans we're dealing with uh, young people uh we have emotions and you know all kinds of things so if you there there are reasons why they want to do certain things you understand it and and sometimes they come into uh challenges and then you have to ask what are the challenges why is it so it's asking the question why and then how and it's mm-hmm. it's pursuing that from there you know together together not you so let's just say decisions. moving on from uh, jd's question suddenly your son says he wants to be a rocket scientist but he hasn't done much science uh, learning he hasn't done much of um at maths or whatever uh do you I have would, to then do you have to then put him back in school to learn all these things not necessary i mean the in the resources in the community is very rich yeah so there have been uh, instances where there are uh, parents who seek out uh, botanists you know uh, scientists all this you can seek them out and you know what a but the great thing is people are actually very willing to help you know you just have to seek them out and it's not that difficult just talk to people you know um i want to look for this rocket scientist you know do you know in malaysia where then they say oh i know somebody you know and then you go go and meet them <laughs> yeah but nasa is not so going to hire sort of like you a- apprentice yeah it, whatever it takes if the person is really really i mean uh we have had uh kids who, who are interested in uh racing car racing and mm. uh, so they want you know but usually i can tell you that it doesn't come from the air somebody must have influenced them and that somebody is usually someone close could be the father you know or someone they they meet quite often that inspires them to do something they don't just you know suddenly yeah so that there will be uh, someone a role model that they they want they have been in touch with and that is where they they get this passion they yeah, grow this in, passion yeah but in these cases though i mean you don't require formalized training in in a sense for these kind of jobs like but if you want to be a rocket scientist or you want to be a mechanic or if you want to be uh an engineer yeah. you have to have certain basics right yeah so i say you seek them out you seek and look for look for the resources in in yeah in your area or from the internet you know so that Speaking is the resourcefulness of, which, yeah. of parents how how big a community is there uh, how big is the homeschooling community here in malaysia i uh, i really can't tell because okay. there's no uh, figures but uh it's it's definitely has grown from the time we started 20 years ago yeah it definitely has grown because you like there's there will be events like science science fair or history fair and then you see boom wow hundreds so of many. people come mm. yes okay so yeah uh, and from it, the internet in your opinion whileing what 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 are some of the most significant benefits of homeschooling children what what have you seen in your own kids how have they like developed and and flourish in the homeschooling environment i think definitely they um they know what they want and they are doing what they they enjoy most even though it's it can be very difficult mm. okay it's not easy so uh it's not an easy path but uh because they they have had this time to find themselves and and that is something you know a lot of us we can we are still searching for ourselves when not in our old age <laughs> so it's like as the sooner they can find themselves and understand themselves and what they can and what they want to do uh i think that is uh for a parent for a parent that's the the best thing because mm. i don't have to worry about uh them going astray you know uh even if they do i mean there's always an anchor back 
to um, I think the family uh, or mm. or your faith, whatever. Yeah. So this this is time is precious because you only have less than 20 years really to be with them and to nurture and uh, share the values that are important to you. And then they, when they grow up, they, they have the this, this similar values and, uh, and in their lives, the, the right choices they make is based on all this, you know? It's not okay. just fo following other people and then in the end, they're not happy. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, how much time do you have to devote to your children if you homeschool them? Like, what other options are there for busy parents out there who want the this experience, this homeschooling experience for their child, but they don't have enough time to spare? Okay. Actually, it's not about how much time. It's how how ready and open you are. Because for me, it's like uh, the first hurdle I had to overcome was actually it wasn't really a big issue for me but a lot of parents uh, mothers especially they you know they had to think about uh being a stay-at-home mom mm. when they have been a career ladies all the, all the while you see so that is one very big issue but then if for me it's like I, I just drop my career and happily because it's I think uh, motherly instincts or whatever I, I never knew I had you know but when I became a mother, it's like everything changed. Everything changed. All my priorities changed. For is everything is for my children. Um, but everyone has different priorities, so I cannot tell. But the thing is, you have to be open to the idea of um, spending time with your children, and uh, and it, it can be you can still be a career, continue with your career, or or. Some people do their businesses, you know, and then get their children involved. So it's nothing is black and white, you know. It's that's why I said okay. it's all about look, just understand how how children learn, and then find out how you can support that learning. That's all. That's all it it boils down to. Okay. All right. So it, it, it's not necessary that you have to be a stay-at-home mom if you want to homeschool your children. No. But it's a choice. Okay. So how about a parent who really cannot teach or cannot cannot connect with their children? Like under what circumstance would you not recommend homeschooling? Yeah, I, mean, I understand it's not easy teaching your own child. Yeah. Right? Uh, but there are tutors you could go or friends who who, who can do it. You know, the, the community is very big. Yeah. So uh, I don't do math. <laughs> um, so... I let my uh, a friend who says I love math. I said, oh, when I hear that, you know, you love math, so you, I want that love to transfer to my child. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay. It's like, yeah, there are so many possibilities. Possibilities. Mm, okay. So as long as we don't shut our minds to possibilities, everything is possible. Okay. I guess we've just been so ingrained in this in this route, right? In this yes, like, okay, go yes. to school, go to high yeah, school, go to exactly. university and college and then come out and look for a job that you like. Um, well, uh, Wailing, you actually founded Learning Beyond Schooling, which is a non-profit organization that aims to help other parents embrace these alternative methods of education and learning. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about Learning Beyond Schooling and how exactly has this platform helped, you know, other parents out there? Um, well, it's been um, more than 10 years. Uh, and uh, basically, it's like I, I post a lot of uh, articles. I write most of them. So if you want to find out more of our journey uh, and also other, other families uh, included, you can go into our website, learningbeyondschooling.org. And I also written a book called the same title, Learning Beyond Schooling. Actually, it was published by Palando 2008. It's out of print. So now we've, uh, we are offering it for free download on our website. So you can go in, just download the book and everything is there. Okay. <laughs> yes. So you do have a community in Learning Beyond Schooling to be able to help other parents ease into homeschooling. Yeah, it's a... Uh, if they choose. Yeah. Informal, loose community, you know, so everyone knows everyone else. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so it's like um, once you 
connect and then we can like direct you to uh, whichever uh, group that you you are looking for. Uh, but what would you say to parents then who are considering homeschooling their children, especially during this weird time right now? <laughs> I think uh, the word homeschooling is kind of like old already. <laughs> okay, so, so what's the our, new term? In a 21st century, I think it's uh, a lot. People talk about self-directed learning, you know, so uh, individualized learning, personalized learning. So it's, it's, you must focus on the learning. You must focus on the learning, whether it is homeschooling or unschooling, whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. But the important thing is how your child learn and your, how your child learn is unique. So you cannot like, uh, you know, follow 40 to 50 students in the class the same way, especially mm. today, especially today. Their brains are very different from 50 years ago, right? Our time, from our parents' time. So this, it's this, and then the nu nutritional, uh, what do you call it? The, the nutrition bi biologists or whatever they are, they're discovering that each person's DNA and uh, gene is unique too. So our intake of foods and the nutrients uh, and the, all this is also unique, right? So what more? The learning style, yeah? So I'm, so my, my key word is learning, okay? Understand how your child learns and you try to support that learning. That's all you need to think about. <laughs> the rest, the rest, you just, you know, you, 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 you put it in place unique to your own family's needs and requirements and what you can provide. Actually, I have one more question <laughs> and I forgot to ask earlier. Uh, in terms of, in terms of costs, right? Is it expensive to, to do this um, personalized yeah, learning? That, there is a kind of misconception that oh, my my daughter came back uh, one day, you know, and she said, uh, my friend found out that I was homeschooling, and he, and he said, "Well, rich kid." <laughs> then she said, "What?" You know, so that's that misconception that thing that only rich people can homeschool. So no, it's not true. Uh, you can, you you the good thing is. You, you manage it, you, you know, you can do it as little cost as possible. It's, you know, it's doable. Or if you have lots of money, you can, you know, go for summer camp in this country and that country every year. You know, who's, who's to say you can't do that, right? Mm -hmm. So, but the thing is, um, it's not, you know, you don't have to think in terms of like, most people, they, when they, they think of, oh, I don't want them in the public school. So no. Maybe I put them in international school and then I look at the fees so it's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know? So that is not even college yet, you know? And then you have this kind of money you have to spend. So no, for us, it's like, uh, it's it's not quantifiable. <laughs> it's, just, it's just as long as you feed them, you buy them books. Oh yeah, we spend on books, lots of books, yeah. Okay. So, um, reading materials, you know, things that uh, will help them learn. That's all. You don't need a lot of things to learn. You need just a very curious mind and a very resourceful thinking. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And especially in this internet age, I guess you can just Google everything. Yeah. But then, of <laughs> course, uh, there's more to it, you know, as you can, you can see through and all. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, thank you so much. Wow. I like for that um, eye-opening conversation. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you for having me. We do have to rethink. We really do have yes, to, I guess, yes. rethink the way children learn. Yes, we have to rethink everything now. <laughs>